This video is the last page of your solution to geometry notes. I think it's page 12. Um, it's just question number 17. It's really nothing different than what you've done. It just has some different terminology in there. but still just stoichiometry. Um, so this is saying solution reactions and quantitative analysis. So quantitative just means numerical analysis. So you're analyzing a sample. So here's what you're trying to figure out. You're just trying to figure out the concentration of something. So maybe I give you, um, maybe I give you a beaker that has some HCl on it. And I want to know what the molarity is. Okay, so we would titrate that okay, to figure out the concentration of this HCl. So that's one thing we're trying to do. Figure out the concentration of something we don't know the concentration of. Or maybe we're trying to find the percent of a species in a solid mixture. So, you know, maybe we have a mixture of like some magnesium chloride and some magnesium nitrate. And I want to know what percent of that mixture of solid, these are solids, like two powders mixed together, what percent of that mixture is magnesium chloride, what percent is magnesium nitrate. So those are, those are kind of what we're trying to do. Um, I'll do a couple examples of those. Some things you need to know. Okay, it's usually the process of titration, which you may have done last year with Mrs. Sorensen, um, where it kind of turns pink oftentimes in the ones you were doing probably last year. So we were titrating something that we don't know the concentration of, or we're trying to find the percent of it. So we'll titrate, titrate it with something we do know the concentration of. Some terms. The titrant is the solution delivered that you know the concentration of. Okay, we'll talk about that. Analyte is substance being analyzed, the thing we're trying to figure out the concentration of, or the thing we're trying to figure out the mass percent of. A standard solution is a solution we know the exact concentration of. So I will usually standardize this solution for you. We're going to know it's exactly 0 0.023 molar. So that's a standardized solution. All right, more important terms. Equivalence point and point. These are more important. So the equivalence point in a titration is when you have added the exact amount of titrant so that the moles of titrant are stoichiometr stoichiometrically related to the moles of analyte used. In other words, if we were doing this reaction, it's when this is in a two to one ratio with that. We've added the exact number of moles of this, subtract off all of that. That's your equivalence point. When our moles of those are stoichiometrically equal. That's your equivalence point. Your end point of a titration is the point in which the indicator changes color. So we'll have to have, we always do titrations with something that will change color um, so we can tell when that titration is done. We want these to happen at the same time. Not always quite possible that they do, but they have to be really close to each other. So we have to pick out an indicator that happens close to the equivalence point. So let me give you just a little example here of what I'm talking about. So let's say we have a, Let's say we have a flask that's got some HCl on it that we do not know the concentration of. Okay, so we're trying to figure out the molarity of this of this HCl. So you got some HCl on there. Uh, maybe we have 100 milliliters of HCl, and we don't know what the concentration is. What is that molarity of that HCl? It's an unknown concentration. So what we would do is we'd react it with something that reacts with it, number one, and number two, that we know the exact concentration of. Okay, so this is acid, we react it with a base, probably like sodium hydroxide. So um, usually, turn this just a little bit, get this a little closer. Usually we would take like, this is my burette. So let's say we have some NaOH in there, okay. Um, you know, we'd have plenty of NaOH in there. And say we know the exact concentration of the NaOH um, is exactly one molar. So we know we have exactly one molar NaOH in our burette. Well, this reaction is NaOH. We're going to start dropping it in. It's going to start reacting with HCl. And this produces some salt in some water. So there are acid-base indicators that will turn color as soon as the solution becomes neutral. Well, when these are equal number of moles, that's called the equivalence point. When the moles of these two are equal, 
We've reacted off all of this, all of this. They're in a one-to-one -one ratio in this case, so the stoichiometric clear correct, but when we've reacted off both of those, we've produced only this stuff. That's the equivalence point of the titration, okay? This is our analyte, the thing we are analyzing. This is our titrant or our standard solution that we know the exact concentration of. So we start adding this. Uh, we'd have an acid-base indicator here that probably turns, we have one that turns pink at a pH of seven, right? When this is a neutral solution, we know as soon as this turns pink, we've added exactly the right NaOH. Moles of that, moles of that would be equal. We'd be dead. So let's just say we do this and it takes us exactly 40 milliliters of NaOH for the solution to turn pink or to be, for all of the HCl to be reacted off. Well, we know that this is 1.00 molar and we had 40 milliliters of it. We know we had 100 milliliters of HCl. So we can figure out what is that concentration? What is that molarity? We could just do a little MVMV. So if I did that, MV for this would be one times 40 equals M times 100. 40 divided by 100 is 0.4. So I would know my HCl was exactly 0.4 molar in there. It doesn't usually come out to be those rounded numbers, but that's kind of the idea of it. We're trying to figure out what is that concentration, All right? So here's our first one. We got a sample of limestone, okay, which is just a rock that contains some calcium carbonate in it. So we have this piece of have this piece of limestone, which is basically just a rock, and some of it is calcium carbonate, not all of it. Okay, now the limestone, the whole rock weighs 1.005 grams. We wanna know what percent of that limestone is calcium carbonate. So we wanna know how many grams of calcium carbonate are in this limestone. I wanna know what percent of the limestone, what percent of these grams are calcium carbonate. And limestone. So what we do is we start reacting off and we take this chunk, put it in a beaker, start reacting it with some hydrochloric acid because hydrochloric acid reacts with calcium carbonate. So here's the reaction of calcium carbonate with hydrochloric acid. Okay, there's a balanced equation. It is the net ionic equation. And it tells us it takes 75 milliliters of 0.25 molar. So the HCl, 0.25 molar HCl and it takes 75 milliliters to reach the equivalence point. So to react off all of the calcium carbonate. So we want to figure out how many grams are there of calcium carbonate if it took exactly this much HCl to react it off. So it's just normal stoichiometry going from this over to that. Now it just gave us the net ion equation. So we got to do a little bit of work here with that. Start with liters, 0 0.075 liters of HCl. Molarity gets you from liters to moles. Every liter contains 0.25 moles of HCl. Well, notice the next thing is H plus ions. I'm gonna do a little ratio here that you maybe you don't have to do, but I'm gonna say for every mole of HCl that dissolves, it contains a mole of H plus ions. So I know that this molarity of HCl is also the molarity of H plus ions because it's in a one-to-one -one ratio. And then I can do my ratio. For every two H pluses, there's one calcium carbonate. For every two moles of H plus ions, there's one mole of calcium carbonate. And then we can go moles to grams. Mole of calcium carbonate is about 106 grams, I believe. Maybe it's 100 grams, sorry, it's about 100 grams. Mole of calcium carbonate, 100 grams. Multiply across top divide. Um, again, this little step right here, don't let that confuse you. It's really just saying that really one liter of this solution would contain 0.25 moles of H plus ions. And that's just what was in there since it just had the net in there. We did have to do our ratio, two to one ratio in there. Uh, when you do that, you get 0.938 grams. So 
So that is our grams of calcium carbonate and the 1.005 grams of limestone. So to get the percent of calcium carbonate divided by the 1.005 grams of limestone, that divided by that is about 93.5%. So that rock is 93.5% calcium carbonate. The rest of it would be other minerals making that up. All right, we're going to go on to the next one. Right, it's getting a little bit long. Um, this question says, what is the number of moles of H2C2O4 titrated if you had this much KMnO4? So they're titrating this with some KMnO4. Okay. Notice this is MnO4 negative ions, not KMnO4, but not a whole lot of difference there. Um, so we really, it wants to know, oops. It wants to know moles of that, knowing that we used 38.36 milliliters of this, that is 0 0.0283 molar. Normal stoichiometry. Get this into moles, do your mole ratio. We're going to stop the mole ratio because all it wants is moles. It doesn't want molarity, it doesn't want grams, it just wants moles. So starting with your liters, 0 0.0383. 36 liters. Use your molarity to get from liters to moles. Every one liter of this solution is 0 0.0283 moles. Now that is moles of KMnO4. But every mole of KMnO4 makes a mole of MnO4 negative ions. So I can just say it's moles of MnO4 negative ions. Now I can do my ratio. From that to that. Two to five. Every two moles of MnO4 negative ions, there's five moles of HC2O4. And it wants just moles, so we are done. Liters, liters to moles to get molarity, mole ratio to get to moles. And moles there's point. 00271. That was a weird titration, and they were usually trying to figure out the concentration of that species, okay, or a percent of it in there. All right. Last one. Actually, I'll just let you guys try this one, I think. Okay. You may want to write the full equation out of Na2CO3 with H2SO4 because it is a little weird with that in there. Okay, um, I'll talk, talk you through what's going on here. You have a sample of some Na2CO3, but it's not just Na2CO3. It's this grams is partially Na2CO3 with something, something else in it. Okay, so not all of that, I think. Nope, scratch that. Sorry, it is highly pure. Scratch that. I apologize. Um, it is all that. So you have you have some sodium carbonate. It is sodium carbonate, though. It's not just carbonate ions, okay? You can't ever just have carbonate ions unless they're in dissolved in solution. So the mass of this is the whole thing. So you have 0 0.3647 grams of sodium carbonate. Maybe I will walk you guys through this one now that I, now that I look at it. So we have grams of sodium carbonate. Um, it wants to know the molarity of H2SO4. Well, this is the H2SO4, which is a strong acid. And it tells you that we're going to use 42.16 milliliters of it. It wants to know what is that molarity. Knowing that it takes exactly that many milliliters to react off this many grams of Na2CO3. So I got to start with this. I got to somehow relate that to that, work my way to H plus ions, and then work my way to H2SO4. I'm going to do this in, in a decent number of steps here. So Na2CO3 is 106 grams per mole. Now we don't have the full equation, we have the net. So 
I got to relate my compound to my ion. I got to do a mole to mole ratio for my compound to my ion. Well, for every mole of Na2CO3 that dissolves, it produces one mole of carbonate ions. It produces two moles of sodium ions, but those are spectators. Every one mole of this compound dissolved produces a mole of CO3 negative two ions. You wouldn't necessarily have to do that step unless it was a, unless it happened to be a two outside that. Every one carbonate ion is two H pluses. Do my ratio, one carbonate to two H pluses. Every one mole of carbonate ions that reacts produces, reacts with two moles of H plus ions. Well, we're trying to get to molarity of H2SO4. So now I got to do this. I got to relate H plus ions to H2SO4. Well, every mole of H2SO4 that dissolves produces two moles of H plus ions. So I had to relate those to each other. Um, that would get me to moles of H2SO4, then you divide by the number of liters that I have of H2SO4. 42.16 liters would be 0 0.04216 liters. So dividing by my liters, 0 0.04216, sorry, that's really hard to read. So I'll have moles divided by liters. Now, had you written out the full equation, had you written out Na2CO3 plus H2SO4, and just wrote it as a double replacement, these would have been in a one-to-one -one ratio. So you just would have done a one-to-one -one ratio. If you notice here, this two and this two is going to cancel. Ends up making it a one-to-one -one ratio anyways. Um, when you're done with this one, you end up with like a 0 0.08 molar solution. Your H2SO4, 0 0.08 molar H2SO4. Not a huge fan of that problem. Okay, a little bit weird. Not quite what we're going to do with some of the steps. It's going to be a little bit different than that. But we do have to relate the ion sometimes, which we'll get to. Sorry for the long video.